so before i start talking about the users and gratifications theory which is the topic uh, we are going to discuss today i'll just uh, take a small uh, look back at uh, a very important theory which is known as the uh, uh, mass society theory that that we should uh, know about before we start talking about uh, users and gratifications and all these things so this is how the communication theory started where people thought that media had uh, extreme power and especially during the early 20s and and 30s when it was the age of propaganda and all that people thought that uh, mass media was extremely powerful and the average people were just helpless victims of powerful uh, mass media there absolutely no way to resist the influence of mass media nor could they do anything about uh, deciding uh, whether to be uh, exposed to mass media or not so initially our uh, audience was conceived as a homogeneous mass that would consume uh, content in an uncritical and uh, superficial manner they had no control whatsoever over uh, uh, you know the amount of uh, 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 media they would consume or uh, even even uh, how they would consume so on and so forth so that is how uh, mass society theory started off an audience was thought to be passive then they would absorb content whatever was given to them uh, without much critical analysis it was just uh, uh, the concept of audience we had at that point of time was uh, not only homogeneous but also passive and the powerful and the effect of media content was unidirectional and powerful that means there was absolutely no view or theorists of that time had no idea about audience members uh, reaction or uh, uh, effect on the media itself we'll see later that even that has some effect on media content how the audience behaves or what the audience wants so uh, this is just a very very small background of the mass society theory which considers uh, media to be extremely powerful and audience to be passive uh this was uh, some kind of an oversimplification of how uh, audience members would use consume and make sense of media messages and users and gratifications theory is more about how uh, audience members use and uh, make sense of media messages and uh, i don't want to get into the details of uh, marshall mcluhan's work around the same time in the 1960s uh, especially on uh, technological determinism so that was again another factor which made people to rethink the uh, role of uh, media as being extremely powerful and uh, that also was was in in certain ways uh, influenced by this limited effects theories again as i said this is just for for backdrop of today's uh, presentation the limited effects theories has uh, uh, two main components to it one component is that media's power is shaped by or the uh, impact of media or the effect of media on different individuals is shaped by their their inherent personal factors it could be their own intelligence or their self esteem or whatever so that meant that uh, the media did not uh, was not as powerful as it was believed to be but it had or it affected different people differently and the other limited effects theory uh, category was that about the social categories model so uh, that uh, uh, posited that media's power was limited by audience members own associations and group affiliations now we are aware of the two step flow model or the personal influence theory of lazar's feld so this this belongs to that particular category so uh, going back to mass society theory two uh, limited effects theory so that was one one step forward in the direction that media was not as powerful as it was thought to be and it was shaped by individual differences it was shaped by the uh, communities or the categories to which people belong to uh again uh, there were three important factors during the 70s two theoretical factors and one methodological factor which led uh, researchers to talk about uses and gratifications theory in the manner uh, that we know about it today so uh, the uh, one of the two theoretical developments was the uh, 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 assumption or was the conclusion that people's active use of media was a very very important factor so uh, whether we regard media as powerful or not depends on how people use it and that was one factor that was not uh, considered in our earlier theories when we were talking of the limited effects theories that no media was not powerful enough there were individual differences and there were differences because people belong to certain communities later it was found out that there were uh, very very important factors including what uh, people or how people use media 
or how they were actively using media. I will uh, keep on using this term active in, in certain senses. But uh, this was one important theoretical development. The other theoretical development or the other uh, conceptual idea that uh, came to being around that point of time was that most of the uh, uh, you know effects that people were talking about or most of the effects that media scholars were talking about were the negative effects of media. So it could be intended, it could be unintended, but generally when we, people uh, uh, spoke of powerful effects, uh, media effects theory, they were talking of the uh, negative uh, effects of the media, the intended positive uses of media, not effect, the positive uses of media. Will uh, In today's uh, presentation, we'll talk about what these positive uses are. So that were being ignored. And the third uh, uh, development during that particular time, which is more of a methodological development, was the uh, uh, growth in, in, uh, in, uh, and the development in the new survey research methods and data analysis techniques, which allowed uh, people to uh, interpret how uh, various audiences were making use of media and what gratifications they were getting from media. So these techniques were not present in the uh, 50s or 40s. So that is why a lot of research in this particular area was not, not even possible. So just going back uh, from, from, from a mass society theory to limited effect to the realization that, okay, the audience itself could be active. It's not... Uh, always passive or they are not always uncritically uh, consuming media content and then this methodological development so these three uh, uh, developments led to this uh, idea of audience as being active and these uh, uh, are four uh, factors of, of activity there are there might be many others but these are, are uh, generally regarded as uh, four very very important factors of activeness of the audience so what utility they make of media it's not about what how media influence it. it's about it's also about what uses we make of the media it's also about intentionality that whenever and we will uh, talk about this in greater details as well that uh, what uses we make of media is something which is deliberate something that is known to me something that i decide it is not something that is accidental or it is not something that is imposed on me so that question of intentionality is also one attribute of an active audience. The third part is about selectivity. And this is something that we can we can uh, understand from our uh, everyday usage of media as well. Why do we decide to uh, read, say, for example, Times of India compared to Hindustan Times or the Hindu or whatever? Or why do we watch uh, uh, Aaj Tak and not uh, uh, NDTV or whatever? So whenever we are making that selection, we are... Uh, portraying our activity or we are, we are we are presenting ourselves as an active audience so selectivity is also a very very important attribute of active audience and finally imperviousness to influence so uh, uh, and that is related to media literacy also in certain ways that i'm aware that media is trying to influence me so i'm able to resist that uh, influence or i'm able to resist that effect so these are uh, four uh, 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 parts of active audience that came to being uh, uh, during this uh, uh, journey of, of uh, media uh, research scholars from mass society theory, as I said, to limited effects theory, and finally to the active audience uh, uh, paradigm. Before I get into uh, uh, the uses and gratifications theory, it's important to again, you know, talk about uh, uh, this uh, uh, very important development which took place in the field of psychology, basically, and this is the well-known Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which uh, uh, most researchers and students are aware of. So around this time, there was this needs research or how uh, or what were the basic and the psychological needs of uh, human beings universally. And uh, we, we understand that, you know, right from the basic needs of, 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 of physiological needs, food, water, shelter, etc., to safety, to social needs, to esteem needs, and finally, self-actualization. So this kind of research was also going around uh, at that point of time. And that is what led to uh, the development of users and gratifications theory as we know it. And we will be talking about that, as I said, in greater detail in, in, in a moment's time. So uh, there are certain uh, uh, assumptions of uh, uh, those theories and there are, cert there are certain background for users and gratifications theory as well. So I I'm just summarizing some of it here and we'll uh, come back to that in greater details, as I said. So people consume media messages for all sorts of reasons. So it can be for entertainment. It can be because you're trying to pass time. 
it can be because you want to be a part of group because everybody is talking about some media content or something maybe on on, on some uh, ott platform or whatever so you even you uh, want to uh, you know talk about that so that you will uh, be able to converse in that particular group or whatever so different people consume media for very very different reasons often it is it is also uh, uh, you know a kind of a symbol that you want to portray okay i watch uh, uh, discovery channel for example so you watch it and it makes you feel good and you want to send that message across to people that okay he is he has uh, this uh, sophisticated he or she has that sophisticated taste of uh, consuming media content so as i said there are very many different reasons we'll try and find out uh, or we'll try and create you know some kind of a list of those reasons but uh, important to realize that people consume media messages for all sorts of reasons and the effect of that message is unlikely to be the same for everyone it will be different for different people but the driving mechanism is need grat gratification that i'm consuming media content uh, directly and deliberately because i want some needs to, to be satisfied so that i need some need uh, or i want that need gratification that is why or at least that is the mechanism of the theory of users and gratification so if we understand the particular needs of media consumers then why they consume uh, certain inf uh, uh, media content and why they do not consume certain media content will be more clearer uh, this is uh, uh, the seminal work that we have to talk about this is in the prestigious public opinion quarterly uh, published in uh, 1973 january this is the first uh, and the most uh, authoritative uh, research article on users and grat gratification theory and uh, this is by elhay cards uh, jg blumler and uh, michael gurevich so uh, some of the things that we are going to talk in today's presentation is is based on this work by uh, cards blumler and gurevich uh, one of the important things that uh, they uh, um, talk about is that the audience is active audience is conceived often as an active audience it is not passive and important part of mass media use is goal directed they want to satisfy certain goals they want certain need gratification that is why they are consuming media content it could be very different it could be entertainment it could be passing time it could be as as i said many many different reasons but people actively seek out specific media and specific content to generate specific gratification so i might be on the internet for for certain uh, specific content so that i i need some uh, specific gratification if i want some immediate information then i might be on my uh, mobile phone right now so uh, uh, this is a very very important assumption or this is a very important uh, backdrop to the users and gratifications theory uh, why are people regarded as active because they are able to examine and evaluate various types of media for accomplishing various communication goals and even now when we talk about social media we understand that okay what are the type of content i would want on twitter and what uh, do i want it for facebook and on 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 a closed uh, whatsapp group it will be different kind of communication or whatever so uh, our our uh, uh, activity is 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 in uh, you know understanding that all these different uh, media outlets are are present and i can accomplish different communication goals through these outlets a uh, study of media effect must take into account that people deliberately use media for particular purposes and we keep on emphasizing that we'll keep on coming on to that because that is one area where the audience becomes uh, the center of the uh, game it's not about how how the uh, uh, structure of the media affects people but how people consume that media or how audience is regarded as powerful so this is as you can understand uh, uh, a very important uh, structure of of the audience itself so uh uses and gratifications are inextricably linked what uses you want to get from media and what gratifications you draw from that they are linked so i want to use media for this purpose and i get certain gratifications out of that so th this is based on my deliberate choice in using a particular media or not using a particular media again another very important thing that these researchers uh, cards uh, bluemler and gurevich talk is that uh, media is one one among the different things or uh, one among the different activities that people can do you know you could be playing a video game or you could be reading a book or you could be having a tea or coffee with your friend or you could be hanging out uh, you know in your locality or whatever or you could be consuming media so media is one of the activities that you decide to participate in 
it's not that you know you do not have a choice so out of all those choices we are consuming that and this is very very important that why would you uh, not be doing all those things but watching a particular tv channel and that's very important because you want a particular gratification which you think is not available elsewhere and we will just uh, in a moment's time you know talk in, in, in more details about that so people are aware of their own media use and if if we ask them or if we as researchers try and find out from them then they will be very uh, clearly able to tell us that you know what are what is uh, why am i using this particular media and uh, 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 you know what what uh, gratification do i draw out of that i'm sure uh, you know many of us will be thinking that okay much of it will not be true I, when i go back to the weaknesses of this theory i will talk in details about this as well but this is the assumption that these authors make about uh, uh, uses and gratification theory and another very important as researchers that we should suspend our uh, uh, judgment regarding why people are consuming different content and i'm sure we understand that we we have this concept of low brow content and high brow content or whatever but as i said this is uh, dependent on how people view that what you you as a low brow is not very important how people or what gratification do you think that people get out of that maybe they they identify with certain things or maybe they are getting uh, uh, you know certain kind of gratification which probably we are not aware of so it should not be based on researchers uh, judgments or the observers judgments but it is based on what audience for themselves uh, things is, is is right for them or what uh, what they think is is uh, good content for them uh, again i'll talk about th these uh, five uh, different things which lead to uh, uh, our usage of media or or, or uh, you know these kind of things so uh, i would want you to just uh, consider on these uh, five things uh, a little carefully first is that you know in in the present social situation or or whenever this was in the 70s and much of it is true even today it produces a lot of tensions and conflicts and i, I might add stress and strain as well so uh, since this uh, the social structure or, or, or the society in which we live it there is uh, the possibility of these tensions and conflicts etc we need uh, you know some easement of this pressure and that is possible through media consumption so we might be going to face uh, youtube to watch some old songs or we might be uh, watching uh, mtv beats or whatever just to ease or even some uh, 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 you know kapil sharma show or any kind of a comedy or whatever it uh, different people react differently uh, we will we will talk about that because uh, maybe there are some people who would uh, find a lot of gratification in a horror show which which uh, uh, many others would 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 not even dare to look at it or maybe many people would find a, a political talk show very entertaining where maybe many others would not even you know touch uh, you know go even miles closer to that they would not so it depends on different people as i uh, keep on emphasizing uh, second thing is that uh, our social social situations might create some awareness of problems that exist and uh, you know they might be demanding attention about which we will consume media content to know more about those problems etc so because we live in a society we know about maybe so for example the covid situation now or maybe climate change or about all these things or any any kind of a thing so we we uh, are made aware of these uh, problems that exist and we use media to uh, get get some answers to these uh, problems another very important thing is that uh, in covid world of course uh, travel and all that is restricted and even uh meeting friends and going out to places is restricted but generally it's it's a very uh, uh, uh there are not very many real life opportunities for us to say for example just uh, uh, uh know each and every place about mumbai for example or 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 maybe uh, um, the lord's cricket ground or or uh, maybe north pole or whatever or or any kind of situations so these are uh, real uh, these real life opportunities are not available to most of us and media can serve as substitutes or supplements to this uh, these real life opportunities so when we see a particular movie or when we we, we participate in those reality shows or whatever we see ourselves in those uh, situations and we can uh, live uh, the life of the characters there so that's one uh, social need that media satisfy that it uh, uh, provides us a substitute of all these real life opportunities or even a supplement to these real life opportunities 
uh again there are other things as i said maybe uh, these uh, social uh, situations they elicit spe uh, specific values maybe uh, it might uh, make me a lot more uh, for for example environmentally conscious so uh, i i i will consume those kind of media content which reconfirms uh, my my concerns about uh, 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 environmental uh, issues uh, and all such things so uh, there are certain values that that uh, we might uh, find very important very often we go to media to just reinforce those kind of values one one value could be that okay my cricket team is is better than everybody else in the world so i would go and watch all the places where my cricket team is doing well so these are as i said very crude examples but uh, again uh, uh, our social situations make us require uh, these kind of things from the media and other things as i said uh, 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 you are expected to be familiar with certain media content so everybody could be talking about say for example the film on social dilemma so you must uh, be also watching that particular program because everybody is talking about that and you also want to talk about that so uh, these are some of the things that uh, uh, the social situations lead us to uh, uh, take from media or lead us to uh, uh, you know demand certain uses of media and to draw gratifications from media content so if i have to provide a typology of these based on the uh, social situations that i spoke of these are the things you could be wanting to just pass time you have lots of time and you want to pass it good enough so you will be just uh, going to, through channels or, or or through any other media content i'm just talking about television it could be any kind of it could be print media it could be new media it could be film radio whatever companionship okay you are feeling lonely or or, or you want uh, to uh, uh feel a part of a community or whatever so media gives you that opportunity it also gives you uh, an opportunity to escape from the reality so we it's it's, it's a lot stressful and also i just want some escape so that that's one uh, use and uh, gratification that i can draw from media i want uh, to just enjoy a content so it could be as i said that enjoyment could be very different to for, for different people some some people would be looking for war movies for example others could be uh, looking for horror and still others would be looking at uh, different kinds of content again it's uh, provides us an uh, you, an idea of social interaction so I, i'm not going to, able to go to um, all these local places if a new market or whatever but through media uses uh, usage i know or uh, i can uh, you know uh, take take that interaction to uh, at least at a mental level or even interact with like minded people on social media for example relaxation information excitement these are some of the typo uh, typology or these are the, some of the uses that we can put media to we'll talk about this in a uh, little bit more detail uh, in the next few slides so uh so it could be a cognitive need it could be a need cognitive means you know thinking need that i want information i want knowledge i want comprehension so i could be watching television news or i could be reading newspapers or i could be uh reading some website or whatever so that is another kind of a need as i said it could be a cognitive need it could be affective need that i i i want some kind of an emotional support i want some kind of an emotional or some aesthetic appearance uh, experience as i said so that is another need type and we might be using certain media uh, content to satisfy those kind of needs so it's not just cognitive and effective there are there are uh, many other kinds of needs that i'll be talking about just uh, here so uh, it could be personal integrative as i said so uh, i want i want to feel good about myself about my community about my so a lot of uh, these things about identity are are also you know related to media uses or looking for such kind of content so it's not always what media is offering me i have those choices and i'm using uh what uh, what need i uh, need to be gratified at that point of time so it's, it it might be cognitive at or it might be a combination of these needs it could be cognitive affective personal integrative social int integrative and tension release as i said you you might be just looking for uh, some escape or some diversion so you want to uh, watch a movie for 3 hours or you watch, want to watch a comedy show or you want to read uh, uh these kind of content so on and so forth so uh, these are various uh, need types and these are some of the description of those need types so uh, the strength of the users and gratification theory is that it focuses attention on individuals individuals are at the center of the mass communication process they get to 
decide for themselves that what are they going to watch and what gratification are they going to get from that kind of a content it respects intellect and ability of media consumers media as uh, consumers are not regarded as a homogeneous unintelligent uh, people without any any uh, uh, cognitive ability or whatever but uh, so this theory respects uh, that part of uh, media consumers that they have intellect and they have a lot of ability or at least uh, uh, even even media literacy wants media consumers to have this intellect and this ability as we discussed in our uh, last lecture it also provides uh, analysis into how people experience media content as i said everybody does not experience it differently there's always the audience side there's one side where uh, the uh, media producer or the content producer would want people to behave in certain ways but there's always a different thing about how me how people experience it and even in the age of uh, uh, this uh, digital media and all there is always uh, an element of user experience and there's a, there's a huge lot of uh, activity going on how people experience certain media content or how they experience certain sites so on and so forth it differentiates active users from more passive users so it's uh, at times i might be just using it passively and at other times i might be using actively so it it differentiates this different uses so it can be different at different times at, at certain times i might be just a passive user but uh, it does not mean that i'm always a passive user it studies media as part of an everyday social interaction as we suggested that the media is among one of the choices that you make every day you could be doing many other things and it 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 could be uh, instead of doing those things you are choosing to uh, uh, interact with media so this is a part of our everyday social interaction why we adopt new media why we adopt certain uh, sites why do we adopt certain social media uh, applications so on and so forth so this is because of uh, uh, the users and gratification theory we are able to get an insight into that uh there are some weaknesses of course and one major weakness is that it's often mistakenly associated with functionalism now functionalist theory is something that we will talk in a later lecture in greater details about but functional theory basically suggests that every uh, section of the society has certain very important roles to perform and since they are performing those roles that that is why there is order and continuity in the society so functionalist theory suggests that you know say for example the police system or the media system or or the postal system or all these systems are very important in society and that is why there is order and continuity in the society but one problem with uh, 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 this functional theory is that it it has a bias towards the status quo it does not allow for change or it does not even uh, uh bother to talk about changes so that is one uh, area it cannot easily address the presence or absence of effects so it does not uh, uh, talk about the effects uh, media effects whether they are present or absent it only talks about what users people make out of it so one of the weaknesses is it doesn't talk about this uh, whether the effects are present or absent or to what extent they are there uh many of these uh, key concepts are unmeasurable many of these things you know your your uh, why why you are using this or what gratification it, these are things that cannot always be measured uh, through uh, uh, scientific tools so even if you were asking people about uh, how how satisfied you were so it it could be just some kind of a uh, not not a very uh, uh, concrete uh, measurement people would be suggesting that okay i wanted this for for uh, enjoyment but to what level or to what extent that is something that is not uh, Uh, possible it's too oriented towards the micro level it's too oriented to the individual it's not uh, 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 talking about the macro level or it's not talking about the structural factors that is one of the weaknesses of the users and gratifications theory and media gratifications are often not associated with effects gratification is another thing effect is another thing so uh, th that distinction is also very important and that distinction is not made in this users and gratification theory uh the research uh, uh, areas uh, are these uh, seven so we can talk about uh, the social and psychological origins of these needs which generate expectations we can talk about the social and uh, psychological origins of the needs itself so what are those needs and what are the expectations uh, uh, from from mass media and other sources which lead to different patterns of media exposure Uh, not even media, different patterns of media exposure, but engagement to media. 
so there are certain so first of all we decide we are going to consume this content and second we decide on how much we are going to engage with it so your engagement could be very superficial at times so these are as i said just uh, research areas that, that we talk about uh, not very important at, at that point of stage but uh, these are the areas that can be uh, uh, covered at the, uh, at this level uh, now i'm going to talk uh, uh, finally about uh, what are the uses and gratifications that we can get from uh, facebook and uh, instant messaging and this is from a uh, from an article about uh, a decade uh, ago uh, in the bulletin of science and technology i'll just zoom it to show you where it is from uh, in the bulletin of science and technology uh, from sage and this uh, uh, this is a quite quite a seminal article it talks about uh, the users and gratifications of social media so i'll just talk about what users and gratifications we can get from social media or what these uh, authors suggest are the gratification that we get from social media so it could be as as they say uh, under the past time uh, section they're talking about these things to kill time because it is entertaining because i enjoy it because it is fun because it is a pleasant rest it relaxes me it gets me away from pressures and responsibilities it 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 gets me away from what i'm doing and to put off something that i should be doing so these are some of the things that uh, these researchers suggest that people make use of uh, facebook or instant messaging for it is also as i said the uh, affection so th this, this is another need so they basically talk of these five needs pastime needs the affection needs the fashion needs a, a problem and sociability and uh, social knowledge so the affection needs i want to thank people i i want to let people know i care about them to show others uh, encouragement to help others uh, to show others that i'm i'm concerned about them so this is this these are the needs that, that people use facebook for as i said you know different people can be having very very different uh, very many different uh, reasons for uh, using social media or, or, or these kind of things so this is what these researchers suggest so i don't want to look old fashioned i want to look stylish so i get to, to know about uh, fashion statements also through uh, usage of uh, social media uh, i i also use it to uh, share my problems because i need someone to talk to or to be with or i need someone to talk about my problems sometimes that is why i uh, go to facebook or I, I i am on instant messaging or to forget about my problems to make friends of the opposite gender to be uh, less inhibited so uh, these are uh, the uses that we talk about so as you can understand that uh, when we talk of uses and gratifications theory we are not only talking about uh, uh, uh the uh simple uses that, that that we think might be there there might be some very complex uses and this is very different for different people so it's not only about uh, <clears throat> the media trying to influence us in certain ways it is about what uses i put media to and what gratifications do i get out of those uh, uh, media that i'm consuming or the media content that i'm consuming so that ends the presentation